something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21, and I'm actually doing the postmortem from my very first flight with the convergence here. And I noticed that there was a little bit more motion in one of the cells than there was in the other, and that had me worried. So I took apart from the cell, and that was pretty easy. Uh, it was only secured by about seven screws. So pulled this guy apart, and lo and behold, right here at the base of the cell, from one of those crashes, I took a nice spill and it cracked the superstructure of the airframe. Fortunately, I planned ahead for this. So I picked up this product right here. It's called Hot Wire Foam Factory Styro Goo. So there's actually a few products out there that you can use to fix styrofoam uh, for styrofoam planes. This stuff, it, it has really high reviews and it was cheap. So I'll, I'll, I'll spice in the price it was. But yeah, I got this entire massive three and a half ounce of uh, jug for less than the cost of like a single like one ounce container of the other leading product so i'm going to go ahead and put the camera on a tripod do a little patch job here this stuff is supposed to get tacky immediately so just go ahead and tack this guy down and then um secure it because uh, you see this little edge here popped up and i'm pretty sure that that's supposed to be secured down like it is on this side so go ahead and use a few drops of the glue, get this back nice and secure, and then put everything down in preparation for putting my laminating uh, film on it. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, like right in here, you can see, let me just go ahead and take this thick glue, I'll just kind of take it up here so it doesn't move. But like right in here, you can see it was moving, so that foam is cracked. So the easiest thing to do is just pull it back a little bit, see if I can get the tip of the thing down, or the applicator down the side of here. So true to advertising, it's almost immediately got tacky. So I'm just going to look it in here for this tunnel here. So per the instructions, it's supposed to get tacky. Uh, allow 30 minutes before disturbing and get full adhesion in 12 hours. So here's the full instructions. So let's go ahead and so I can't hold this for half an hour. So I'm gonna go get a couple little clamps and try to hold this together that way. As you can see in front of us, I've got my convergence um, in pieces. And the reason is um, I was actually doing an inspection following my first flight a few days ago um, and it took some pretty hard hits. So I thought everything was fine, but after giving it a good inspection, I realized that a couple of the foam sections, basically like right here, actually at the base of this nacelle over here, and also on this nacelle over here, uh, suffered some damage where these basically are pulling apart. So, I mean, it was still intact. It wasn't going to like literally fall apart, but it was definitely compromised in strength. So I went through, used some of my hot wire foam factory styroku, but um, in addition, um, I realized that, you know, the way I'm going to be flying this thing in the future, I'm going to be carrying a lot more weight than the plane was originally spec for. So every little thing I can do to give the plane some extra reinforcement and some extra durability, I should probably take that opportunity. 
So, what you see in front of us, all this stuff all around, you know it's plane is a little bit shinier than usual now. Uh, a lot of guys with foam planes have taken an old school approach and they started laminating their frames or laminating their airframes. And what that means, if you think about back in the old days, where they used to have balsa wood construction, used to have ribs that went along with everything. And so they make like a, basically like a skeleton structure. And then they will put a film over it. Usually they use a brand name called Monaco. This isn't Monaco, this is a generic uh, thing I got from Aloft Hobbies. But they use this plastic film called Monaco, which is basically heat shrink, a uh, high tensile streak heat shrink. So you lay it over the rib structure, then you use a little hot iron like this guy right here. And this is just one from my local hobby shop. A uh, pretty good unit. Um, little adjustable thermostatically controlled guy. So you lay it over the aircraft, use the heat to make everything shrink down and it would basically just make it rigid and strong and really awesome. So in the case of a, of a foam plane, if you take a laminating film similar to Monaco and put it on the outside of the aircraft, what that basically does is it uses the entire star foam structure like the rib structure of the old school airplanes and just makes them much, much stronger and, and a lot more durable. It also has the side effect of making the planes really resilient to getting dirty. So as you can see here, I did one of the wings, uh, one of the rudders, or actually, since there's no actual rudder in this aircraft, uh, it, it does it uses thrust differential vector. Well, it uses differential thrust to, uh, to give it a rudder. These are just stabilizers. But as you can see, you have this nice extra shiny look and they're very, very, uh, very strong. I did have a little problem though, because the way that you usually apply this stuff, uh, this adhesive or the film actually has a, a heat activated adhesive in it. So I was reading the forums and the forums were saying that this stuff is okay, but if you really want to make it stick, you should use some spray glue like this 3M Super 77, which dries clear to really help to adhere to the airframe. I listened to the internet and for some reason when I sprayed it on this one everything worked fine I just used a very light uh, mist coat but I must have used a little bit too much and it, it must have some solvent properties because it ended up making the ink run from um, my e-flight sticker here which is a little bit annoying because now it's encased in plastic and it's not like I can just peel this up and fix it but you know lesson learned for the future it's, it doesn't compromise its structure, it doesn't compromise its functionality, so it doesn't really matter too much. But I kind of want this thing to be really pretty. So that's a little bit of a, of a wart, but I can live with it. I mean, worst case scenario, I can just um, buy a replacement set of these, because they, they sell these separately, and do another one, and then I can have this as a spare. All right, so the process for putting this stuff on is actually not too bad. So let me just go ahead and put this on the tripod here. So like I was saying, the process of putting this stuff is actually pretty simple. You take the laminating film, and I have a full roll of it. Like I said, I got from Aloft Hobbies online. I've got probably enough of this stuff to last me a lifetime, as you can see. I forgot exactly how much I bought, but it's probably something like 30, 30 feet. Of, no, it's 50 feet of this stuff. So an uh, 18 inch wide by 50 foot roll, and it, only, it was only like 20 bucks. So you can buy Monocoat, which is the name brand version of this stuff, and it's actually really high quality and such, but this work, seems to work really, really well, and it's a fraction of the cost. So you take some of that, and so you take the laminating film, and you lay it down across the airframe like this. And you go ahead and you make your cuts as to how you're going to lay it out. Now, the cool thing about this is as long as you overlap, um, you don't have to do a one major piece. You can actually overlap several pieces. I try to, when I overlap, I have at least about a half an inch of overlap. Uh, I think that that's just engineering judgment there. It probably it doesn't need to be that much. But the, the thing about this stuff is when you lay it out, it goes on flat and it wants to pull tight. But flat 
papers or flat uh, film doesn't want to go over curved surfaces very well. So just use some discretion and you probably need to go in and make some relief cuts. So there's actually a bunch of really good tutorial videos on how to laminate an airplane. I'll include a couple in the description. Um, they do a much better job in describing the process than I'm going to do here in this time frame. But the bottom line about it is that take your time. A great suggestion that I picked up from one of the videos was do the bottom of the plane first and then do the top. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, number one, usually when you do the bottom of the plane, you know, that's you're not that's not the part you're gonna be looking at all the time, you know, except when you're actually getting in the air. But um it the top part is the prettier part. So by the time you've gotten the bottom done, you should be practiced enough where when you do the top. You should be uh, you should be able to get a little bit a nicer finish. So, um, but take your time. Don't try to rush things. Um, and just take your time to lay everything up, and you'll be fine. So, in this case, uh, I've already done the bottom. I'm about to do the top. So, again, it's the same thing like I said before. You take your film, you cut it into sections for the parts that you're going to do. In my case, I'm going to do a piece for the wing piece for that wing, another piece for the tail, uh, since I already have the stabilizers done. But you might also notice that there's something missing on this bird, and I took this tip up from a, a forum. With, when, it, when they built this airplane, they actually molded a separate piece where the cockpit area is, and then um, they glued this thing in place. So for me, I'm going to be carrying an extra payload inside of here. And, I haven't really revealed what I'm going to be doing with that extra payload yet, but don't worry, it's going to be kind of cool. But in order to accommodate room, because the payload bay underneath here is pretty small, I've uh, I decided to just open this guy up. And so inside of here, you've got this extra structure. And this doesn't really do much. All this is for really is to just centralize it or hold it in place. So what I'm going to do is come up with a little bracket that's going to come out of here into here and hold that down like that and you use a couple of rare earth magnets mounted in the rear like here and here and then have that hold this guy in place just like this little guy right here is held in place so that should be good enough to hold it nice and firmly so i can have access to this payload bag and then i can uh, take out some of this extra redundant structure that's inside here and basically just open this guy up so that i could use this for a few more components i'm going to have to, to to make sure that they have a place to live inside of here. But anyway, so piece of film for this wing, piece of film for that wing. I'm gonna probably use a piece of the excess that I've already cut to get the back of the aircraft. Um, and then another piece to just kind of go over the middle here that I can get some relief cuts and make it lay down nice and flat. So I'm going to lay down this piece first. And I've already um, put in uh, my relief cuts to take the reinforcement film up around the bottom of the aircraft up to a point. So it's, it basically goes about halfway up. So then I'm going to use this film, the, ne the next piece, to come around and wrap to the bottom. And that's going to make the entire fuselage be held fairly rigid. And that is just going to give an extra layer of protection and an extra layer of strength to this model. I mean, it's already pretty tough because you'll see in uh in the first flight video it took some pretty it took some pretty good hits and it didn't fly apart so it impressed me but doing this right here is just going to help me take it to the next level so um so i'll do a little bit more deep dives into this airframe um at some future point because as you can see i've got pieces all over the place but i've exposed where the esc said you know how they wire the routers i mean where they how they route the wires and things like that so all these things are useful information because as I've mentioned to you guys, uh, I'm gonna be replacing the ESCs. Uh, cause right now it's got these fairly decent 20 amp E-Flight uh, 3S capable ESCs in here. And they do a good job, but um, I'm, I'm going to be replacing these with some capsule units, which are actually 40 amp capable ESCs. Um, and and I got some other things. I'm not, I'm not going to reveal 
everything I've got coming, but basically this thing's gonna get a major power upgrade in the, in the near future. Um, so my Venom 30C, uh, 3200 milliamp hour batteries, should be good for about 100 amps. So just a little bit under that, like 96 amps uh, sustained. And there's no way I'm gonna be pulling 100 amps on this airframe, but it's nice to have the extra power capacity. Plus I like the programmability that Castle ESQ is giving. So they've got a lot of nice advanced functions that I can put in there to help me to fly the plane like I want to fly the plane. And well, I'll leave it at that because there's some other stuff that I got cooking. I don't want to tip everything I want to be up to. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and drop off our Hawk 21 time to not remember mantra. Fly, fix, fly. Break it, fix it, and do it all over again. Stay tuned. The conversions upgrades are almost done. At least, uh, at least round one upgrades are almost done. And I'll be starting round two stuff here fairly shortly, but I wanna go ahead and get the Ranger 1600 done and flight worthy before I start taking both planes to what I'll call phase two. So like I said, cool things on the horizon. Keep tuned, you'll see it all. Our House 21 signing out, remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. And like I said, stay tuned, coolness is on the horizon. I keep saying horizon. It's like subliminal programming in here, you know, like Horizon Hobby. It's just like, so anyway, peace.